Boy, we got a bunch of fish pretty much right underneath us here. <laughs> this is gonna line up nice. Get it right on top of them. Ooh, you can see them all chasing up. Yep. And there we go. Oh, you bet. Well, welcome back. I am going to be able to detail exactly what we're doing right now to catch some of these pre-spawn crappie. So first thing you need to know is where these fish were, where they're going, and kind of what the plan is for moving forward here. And you know, these fish, a lot of times in that winter, into that late winter time, they are either over the basins or they're starting to move closer to these shorelines, so these shoreline breaks, as they kind of prepare for the spawn. And so right now we're water temps in kind of that 48 degrees. We've kind of been 45 to 50, depending on where we're at on the lake here. And so I anticipate that these fish are either going to be on that break or maybe starting to move up to some of those shallow areas. So the first things that you're kind of looking for when you go to a new body of water, or maybe it's a home body of water that you know has crappies, you haven't done it a lot, uh, but you're gonna be looking for some of those areas that are the warmest water. So that might be something on the north side of the lake that you know is muddy. Maybe it's a classic kind of a shallow, muddy bay. Those fish are gonna be moving towards there. And sometimes you can go from the basin, kind of you know where their wintering areas are, and then you can find some of these shallow, warm spots, and you can almost draw a direct line or kind of find their travel path. You can kind of work from the deeper parts towards shallow depending on what part of the pre-spawn process they are in. And another one that I really like to try is the shallow weedy points or maybe these big shallow weedy flats. And one of the keys for me is I really like to find either some sort of cattails or some sort of old remnants of some reeds. That's a lot of times where that mud is gonna be, that's gonna warm up quickly, and that's where those fish are gonna be able to move up shallow and spawn. I don't think they're gonna be up there yet, although I might be wrong because, again, it is like 70 degrees out today, maybe even warmer, so that water's warming up quickly. That might give them that first push up shallow. I've only been out once, and they were kind of hanging off the edge of the break. So that's what I'm anticipating today, is seeing these fish off some of these break lines, and we're gonna be able to kind of follow them, target them, and chase them around using a few different tactics. And so kind of what I've done to help kind of break down a big body of water is I've started using my highlight contour feature, and what I'm doing is I am putting my shallow water highlight, the red, into that five and less feet of water. Those are kind of those bigger areas that I'm looking for. I'm looking for big flats, shallow muddy bays, whatever that might look like with those larger red areas. And then from five feet to 15 feet is kind of the range that I'm anticipating that they will be. I'm putting that to my green, you know, my highlight contour area, because I'm guessing they're gonna be working around those edges. So looking for that shallow water, looking for those bigger expansive red areas, and then either finding the breaks off of them, or sometimes it can be a kind of a gradual break as well. So I'm kind of using that highlight contour to take a big body of water, make it into some smaller areas. And so I've kind of set that and I've identified a handful of areas, five to 10 areas that uh, there's a little bit of a shallow muddy bay and actually there's some current going in there as well, which is gonna be even better. Um, I've identified some of these shallow weedy flats or shallow weedy points. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my side imaging, I'm gonna use my live scope, and I'm gonna be driving along these brake lines. And so we're gonna get moving here, trying to find some fish. Uh, once we do, I'll kind of break down the area that we're fishing, how we're gonna go about catching these fish. There looks like some, looks like a school of them out in front, about 40 feet. These ones are off a little bit more. That is the group we're looking for. Oh, yep, you can see that guy coming up already. Yep, there he, there he is. Jeez, took a little bit to find him. These guys are off the edge a little bit more. Seems like a decent fish. <laughs> He's dogging me pretty darn good. Oh yeah, that's a solid fish. Ugh, I'm gonna risk it by boat flipping him. First one of the day, solid fish. We're letting all these fish go today, but we're gonna talk real quick. Took a little driving around, tried some shallow muddy bays, was not seeing anything there. Um, basically what it boiled down to is I tried some stuff on the north side even and just wasn't really seeing a lot. So I find a shallow weedy point and I was kind of working my way around and I thought I was seeing some stuff on the break so I was casting up a little bit shallower, not a lot going on. So actually as I was kind of moving around the outside, kind of the point of, this point, I scan around with the live scope and sure enough, there's a big group off in like 17 feet of water. And so they might move up a little shallower towards the evening, it might just be a little early, um, but shallow, weedy point. You can see some of the old reeds kind of sticking up just a little bit and they're in a pretty good group though, kind of off to the edge. So we're gonna go back, try to find these fish and kind of talk you through what we're using to catch them. Ooh, that one wants it. It all looks decent too. So we can keep them moving. Yep, <laughs> that was a sweet heat. I think it was a decent fish too. Bump a little closer here. 
Oh yeah. I like this little bit longer rod, seven footer. Sweet. That's a respectable crappie. I, I'm just gonna get a few more and then I'll start talking about what I'm doing here. Oh yeah, they're coming up for it. Come on. There we go. Weeding through some of the smaller ones here. We're almost right underneath us here. I feel like those guys spider rigging in the south. Jeez, uh, it's a Mondo group though. Just a big group. You can see all of them. Oh, getting a little better. Oh, fun, none the less right there. Oh, I'm sure my lighting is just terrible. Not the ones we're looking for. So we're either gonna have to find a different group, like that one out there. Another group about 60 feet out. As we're kind of going through this group, I'll kind of share with you what we're doing. We have our steep or our shallow point with those reeds kind of off behind us. And what I anticipate is that they're going to move up closer to that thing um, as it gets closer to dark. But for now, these things are just kind of roaming there in like 18, 19 feet. They've been anywhere like 15 to 20 um, kind of working out. So honestly, kind of came out here with the plan. Uh, not exactly. I mean, it's close because there's that shallow stuff behind, but with the warmer day they are not kind of doing what i would anticipate them to be doing to be able to kind of intercept those guys a little higher there we go see if that uh crappie minnow helped get anything maybe a little bigger a little bit better a lot of these are in that eater size variety they're not too many that i would consider too big not to keep that's for sure which is what I anticipated a little bit more of. <laughs> right in the middle of that thick pod. Hello. Jeez, spooked something. There we go. A little bit better. That's a little more what we're looking for. Another quality fish. Well, <laughs> I'm finally gonna stop fishing for a second here so I can kind of explain what I've got going on for uh, presentation. Uh, it's gonna be hard because there's a group literally, oh, press record, about 45 feet in front, so I'll talk quick. Um, what I'm using right now is to start, it's gonna be bright, so I'll see if you can see it, the Northland. This is a tungsten crappie kingfly. I really like these tungsten jigs. This is a 16th ounce I really like it because you can maneuver it a lot, especially when I'm moving these deeper fish. You know, if they were up way shallow, like five feet, like I thought they might be, I might downsize a little bit, um, but this has been really nice because as you can see with that little bit of fly on it or that little feather, a little bit of tinsel, that on there, um, you don't need any bait. I'm using that on the uh, 2B. It's the seven foot light. This is a cool little rod. Uh, might be like kind of a finesse walleye rod for me, but also a very good panfish rod. Um, again, that is on the PC1 Carbon X2 1000. I have a six pound braid with a four pound fluorocarbon leader. And yeah, just kind of working through. I'll just kind of show you exactly what I'm doing. I'm seeing these fish. Again, these ones are suspended. They're 30 to 35 feet out in front. Cast that out. Basically, you can see it dropping right into them. And that one did not take long. I didn't even get a chance to pan over to it. Uh, you can see that one coming in. That group, as you can still see out, about 30, 35 feet. So they're not spooking, which is kind of nice. And yeah, as you can see, no live bait, no nothing needed with that um, Crappie King fly jig. And I will use a uh, just the regular, I believe it's called the Crappie King jig. Um, we'll use that and put a minnow or a plastic on it too. But honestly, these flies are nice because I've caught a bunch of fish already. and none of this you can see none of it is really deteriorating or anything i do have another one rigged up with um, just the regular crappie king jig and a slip bobber which i might use at some point uh, just to try it out because there's something about watching a slip bobber go down that's a ton of fun again shallow point up off honestly i would consider this pretty much basin right now we are out pretty much halfway between shore and that point and again, these fish are just cruising around. So I'm guessing we could cruise around over a lot of this and find these fish, uh, but these fish are over there. So I'm gonna keep chasing after them here. Ooh, that's a good group right there. They're high. Yep. I don't know where that one came from, but I think I was right in the mix of the whole group of them. Oh, God, you can see that group just cruising suspended again. These ones, these suspended ones seem to be a little bigger. 
Another little bit better size here. Definitely not giants. Another solid fish. All right, just for fun, I'm gonna switch to that other presentation here. All right, so next one we have is, um, this is the Crappy King Jig. This is the Light Bite Bobber. I do a lot of times like the weighted one. Down about probably 10 feet or so. You can see there anywhere from six to 12. I could probably go even shallower if I really wanted. Let's see, see if we can plop it right on top of them. There you can see it dropping down right over top of them. Wind's picking up a little bit. So it might slowly take a little longer to get back down. Should be right in the mix of that there. The bobber's down. And we're on. So there. Another presentation that can be super effective. Um, even over these, a little more cruising kind of over the basin. Surprise, these fish aren't moving up shallow yet, but again, we're a little more midday. We're not necessarily on that evening bite yet. All right, I'm gonna catch one more. One was already going up for it. Oh yeah, you can see it. I don't think it's at the bobber stop. Yep, there it is. <laughs> That's so fun being able to see. You knew that thing was gonna go down because that fish was coming up for it. Wasn't even at the bobber stop yet. Oh, and another, a little bit more quality fish. Still not finding the bigs, but these are all good quality fish. Couple different strategies there um, for catching these fish. I'm gonna go catch a few more and talk a few more tips. Well, this camera definitely wasn't recording. Another little tip. These little guys are super helpful. This guy just got it at kind of a goofy angle. Just a touch over 13 for that one. Turned it around so we got a little better light for you. I did not deserve that fish, I'm gonna be 100% honest. I whiffed on it like three times, but I was lucky enough to get that one. Um, third time's the charm. All right, so I kind of pulled up into these reeds to kind of give you a look at what you are looking for when I'm saying, seeing some of those remnants of the reeds. So I'm gonna just take my phone out and show you a quick clip of kind of what we're looking for. A lot of times you won't see much. You will just see, there's some obviously more cattails and stuff up there, but you're just seeing the tops of these kind of show up and we are super shallow right now. I'll kind of show you, show you what that looks like here. I'll drop the aqua view down just so you can see what we're looking at. And you can see there's a few still standing, but there's a lot that are just kind of laying down like that. And so, you know, you can see that there's a lot of these areas. This went up a little shallower so you could just see pretty well. There's a lot of these areas like this that holding these old reeds and that's clearly where these crappies are going to spawn they're going to come up that's where these reeds have been standing you know midsummer you're going to see them thick you're not going to be able to get up in here uh, i just want to give you a look to see you know maybe if i said remnants of these old reeds you might not be sure what i'm talking about so that's kind of what you're looking for when i'm talking and this is again on that shallow point that's really muddy so that's kind of what you're looking for up here um, we're just about getting this evening bite so we'll uh, catch a few more fish i'm uh, gonna give a quick recap of some things that i learned just even in today some things that i maybe wasn't sure on um, before we go and then we'll wrap her up for the evening okay, that one's coming back come on there we go <laughs> pulled it right out of the group of that guy oh awesome couple things I do look for in these lakes is I'm looking for a little more stained lakes because they warm up a little bit quicker. Um, and so we're out here pretty early after ice out. So that is another little tip for you is look for some stained lakes if you have them. We have a variety of lakes in the area. We have some that are crystal clear. We have some that are a little more stained like this and um, definitely seems those stained ones warm up a little quicker. Those crappies start to get ready just a little bit sooner. Another little tip that I wanted to give you is what these fish look like on the side of it and you've been seeing a lot on the live scope but i want to kind of show you i just ran this edge here and i took a couple screenshots of what you're going to see basically i'm right on that transition or right on that steep break shallow weeds up to my right 
a little bit deeper basin off to the left. And you can actually see a group on each side. There's a group up a little shallower. You can see that hard white return and then you can see the shadows behind. And then on the left side, you can also see that hard white return of those crappies. So I showed a lot of live scope footage today, but I hadn't shown a lot of the side imaging. So I want to give you a quick look. If you're not using live scope, you don't have live scope, if you're using side imaging, whatever it is, get you, uh, my goal with these videos is to educate as much as I possibly can, teacher at heart. Um, so I hope that shows through. So I wanted to show you that here. As I was going back, I was actually just getting some stuff regrouped for this evening bite before we head in and saw those. So I want to give you one more little tip. Ooh, a couple of those coming out. There we go. Another good little group. Well, took a little break of filming for a little bit uh, midday. Just went and cruise around, caught a bunch of fish, a uh, ton of fun. So we're back out, um, I guess, recording again. First one for the evening. These fish are still kind of cruising out over the basin still. Another thing I did want to ask is, this is a little different view. Obviously, like I said, I moved to an Altrex, so I'm trying moving, using it on the foot pedal. And so far, um, the first time I tried it out, me and my wife just went out for like an hour. I did not like it because it was super windy. I was wanting to actually spot lock and kind of cast these fish. More so the question I guess I was getting to is, do you like this? I know it's kind of hard. You're looking at my back. I'm still showing some live scope footage. I might try to find a way to get a camera up front as well. So give some feedback. What would you like to see? Would you like to see more of a side angle, more of a forward angle? Is this all right, especially with the live scope overlay, trying to add the head cam in? Again, I want to make these videos as enjoyable for you to watch as possible while also being educational. Um, so make sure you let me know in the comments if you like it. If you want something different, uh, just let me know. A better one. A little bit better one. Oh, yeah. Upgraded to. Oh. That one inch plastic. That is the B vibe by Euro Tackle. Uh, just a couple observations. Like I said, water temps are in that 48 degrees. Still quite a few fish cruising that basin. You can see fish, both schools of bluegills and crappies. Um, kind of cruising over those basins. Crappies were a little bit higher. You could see obviously a little bigger red marks. Bluegills, a little tighter, a little bit smaller groups and a little bit closer to bottom typically. Um, definitely had better luck with some of the bigger fish being able to obviously find those higher fish but also tipping it with a little bit of a bigger crappie minnow. Obviously just that little bit bigger profile and some live bait never hurts. One other observation that I did, I did kind of note is a lot of the areas that I checked there were gradual breaks wasn't seeing the fish kind of hanging around those as much. The areas that I saw these fish cruising basin were where it was shallow and steeper break. So shallow, flat, shallow point, whatever it is. And then it got to a steeper break. They'd kind of push up against those as they get prepared to move up onto those. And I anticipate that those are gonna be where they're gonna spawn. Again, a lot of these lakes that I've fished, I've actually only fished two times here, but um, never fished them this time of year. Never done a lot of crappie fishing early in the year like this, like I said, because of baseball. So. I anticipate that that's where they're gonna go up and spawn. Um, but again, that's kind of the run right here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.